Last month, we got to spend a week in the States, and while we were there, I ordered two pieces of gear. Uh, one was a Romanian rucksack, which was made back in the 1970s to 1980s, and a Polish bread bag. The reason I ordered them was for, I wanted a mid-range or mid-weight setup, like less than 40 pounds, that I could carry around the mountains here. I've got nothing against nylon backpacks, they're great, it's just that in the field I can repair canvas a lot, canvas and leather a lot easier than I can repair nylon. So anyway, um, I'm going to put some pictures up to show you guys how this pack looked originally. And then uh, we'll go sit down and I'll show you the modifications I've made. So this is the setup right now with the Polish bread bag on top. And we'll get to the actual pictures. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over uh, is how I attached the uh, Polish bread bag to the rucksack. And what I did, I had a couple Grimlocks that had been around forever in my, in my gear that I never used. So using uh, some leather, I attached the Grimlocks, two on the top, one on the bottom. And it worked perfectly because the Polish bread bag comes with metal rings on top. And you got two straps down the bottom. The strap that I would normally use to carry this with, uh, I keep inside the bag itself. So let's go ahead and take this off. I'm going to do a separate review uh, on this bag right now. It's got some medical supplies. Uh, I should be taking a trip down to see the Quebecer Indians soon, and this will be the bag that I keep with me to uh, for like blood pressure cuff and bandages and things like that. So I'm going to set this aside. Here's that top flap. I removed. There was several attachment points on here that I didn't need because I'm not carrying a helmet on this, which is originally what they were for. So I removed those. I attached that third Grimlock down here. Um, it will fold up and go underneath this strap of leather, which was used to kind of hold the helmet in place. On the side, right now I have a Camelback uh, Molly set up for like a water container. I'll go ahead and take that off. I removed the original, uh, there was an original little pouch with a leather strap on top, which I really didn't like, so I took that off and I replaced it. It used to be right here. I replaced it with some leather Molly tabs. So I can take stuff on, put stuff off. It came with two horizontal straps right there, our little attachment points, which I'm leaving that on for right now. On the other side, I love these little 501 bags that fold out. So I wanted to have that. So I attached a couple molly points for that. And again, you have the two horizontal attachment points. Whenever I got this, it came with probably six different uh, nylon straps, which, I mean, they're great quality. They, they weren't a problem. Um, and I actually put them to use down here, or two of them. Uh, this is my jungle hammock set up. And it's inside a uh, survival scarf made by Tough Possum Gear. 
if you guys know who Tough Possum is. Really good stuff. Anyway, this thing is uh, got a thousand and one uses, and it's got my Hennessy hammock on the inside. Can you tell I've been doing some uh, leather dye work? <laughs> so, underneath that, uh, right now I've got my knife set up to it. Uh, it makes for easy access, and it's hidden up pretty good. So, let's move that out of the way. I need to do a video just on uh, Dave Beck's version 2 sheaths that he's making now. So many options. They're, it's a really, really good system. So I'll set that to the side. So I attached four leather tabs uh, so that I can run straps along the bottom. I also mirrored this on the inside of the bag so that you're actually going leather through canvas through leather and doing a saddle stitch so that way these are never going to rip out on me. The original sewing was a white cotton thread that I honestly didn't have a whole lot of faith in. So I replaced that with what I normally use for my uh, whenever I'm making leather products, which is a waxed nylon, uh, which worked out really well. The here, there's six different points along the edges that um, had a black vinyl from. Of course, this is made 70s and 80s. A black vinyl, which. I didn't really care for a whole lot. I left the vinyl on and then I took some uh, veg tan leather and made a new cover for it. So these are extra heavy duty now. One of the pro, uh, the other thing I did too, see the strap here. Originally, that strap, the attachment point was up here. Um, I like it. I like where the tension was better down here, so I dropped it down. And as you can see, here's the two more little stress points that are covered. I replaced the, it was like a, a white vinyl or white braided nylon cord with some 550 cord and a little cincher. This right here is the the back top of the uh, the rucksack, and again, it had that white cotton thread all the way through it. So I, I ripped all that out and replaced it. Re, uh, re, it's all been re-sewn. And then we go over here to the leather straps. And this is what I was really hoping would be in good shape and they were. Uh, these leather straps are, <laughs> good grief, 40 to 50 years old and they're in great shape. But the the leather straps, again, all that thread has been replaced with this black nylon thread. The leather straps are in great shape. Um, the strapping system that they used back in the day was kind of a German design and it was to be attached to your, your ammo belt I'm sure it had its reasonings, but it really doesn't work for what I need. So I stripped it all down, put a couple thumb loops in because anybody carries a backpack very long, it's kind of handy to have thumb loops. And also, since I can't cinch this down like you do a normal backpack, I can use these as a vantage point to readjust shoulder straps. And then on the bottom, there was just a couple big old metal hooks, um, which I didn't need. So I took a Dremel, cut off the top of the hook that was here. I think it attached to your backpack or to your ammo belt. Separated, because initially the strap had two separate strap systems that came down. I knocked it down to one system. I lengthened, I put a new leather here, this whole section is new, 
it is to lengthen this out to where this is comfortable. So now you can adjust on both sides how tight or how loose you want the bag, depending on how full you have it. The only other thing I can think of off the top of my head that I changed, there was a D-ring up here, and a couple times while I was wearing it, the D-ring would flop over and get like right between my shoulder blades. I didn't like that, so I took it off too. So anyway, right now, this is where my pack's at. I'm looking forward to uh, getting some more dirt time with it. I've taken it out a couple different times. The initial time I took it out was just to see if this would be comfortable, and it was great. Uh, and it's super sturdy. I mean, everything's in really good shape. And I think brand new, the bag costs like, I think maybe with shipping, it was close to $40 with shipping. Uh, and then the Haversack, I got two of these with shipping for like 19 bucks. So, so anyway, guys, that's my Romanian rucksack. Those are the modifications I've made to it. Um, I really like using canvas and leather. It It's easy for me to work with because I don't have a sewing machine. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it works out in the future. If you guys have any comments or suggestions, just let me know. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.